Hello everyone, it's your girl Jay and today I'm here with part two of my wrap up for September 2019. I read a total of 10 books this month so part one was the first five I read and now part two is the final five books that I read this month so without further ado let us get started. <sighs> so the first book I'm going to talk about is The Magicians by Lev Grossman. I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows a boy named Quentin who is a senior in high school and he absolutely hates his mundane life. He secretly loves a a children fantasy series set in the magical land of Fillory. One day he stumbles across Break Bills, which is a magical college which he gains admittance to. He soon discovers that Fillory is actually real and he is given the opportunity to travel there with the friends that he made during his time at Break Bills. This is basically just a mixture of Harry Potter and Narnia for adults. Although very entertaining, I think that the story just dragged on on way too long. I feel like it could have been at least a hundred pages shorter and I still would have gotten the exact same enjoyment out of it. The pacing was extremely slow but for some reason it made you keep wanting to read to find out what was going to happen next. At the beginning of the book I did like Quentin as a character but as the story progressed and he grew older I just started to really not like him. I think that Elliot was probably my favorite of the group although I did like Alice, Janet, Penny, and Josh, but Elliot was definitely the highlight of the book for me. I'm definitely intrigued to continue on with the series, and I do definitely want to check out the TV show to see the parallels between the book and the show, because I've heard that it takes a very different turn from where the book went, so I'm intrigued. Who knows if I'll ever actually get to it, though? 3.5 out of 5. The next book that I have is Permanent Record by Mary H. K. Choi and I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. It follows Pablo who is a college dropout and he works at a 24 hour deli where pop icon Leanna Smart just so happens to come into one night at 4am. They're both searching for happiness in their own way and thus begins a whirlwind romance that they both know is not going to last but they can still hope and it's basically their story. I wanted to like this a lot more than I did. I listened to it on audiobook and unfortunately the narrator made every single female character have this like high nasally voice and it just drove me crazy so it definitely brought the enjoyment of the story down for me. The overall story was enjoyable though. I really loved Pablo and his story arc. I think that he was a great portrayal of a college student honestly trying to figure out what they want in their life and trying to balance work and family and friends and everything that's going on when you are a young adult. I really liked his complicated relationship with his friends and family and I loved how this book talked about depression and student debt in such an organic way. I was not a huge fan of Lee. She was very self-centered and egotistical to me which I feel like it was the point since she lives a very luxurious life you know like everything evolves around her but she just really pissed me off because she didn't really care what Pablo was feeling at any given time it was more everything had to focus around her and what she needed and what she wanted the entire book was basically just Pablo chasing after Lee and dropping everything and everyone that he cared for because Lee wanted him to do whatever she wanted him to do and it just got frustrating very quickly the end was definitely the best part for me. I loved seeing Pablo turn his life around and reach out for help. I wish there was more of an emphasis on his reaching out and asking for help because I think that it's not talked about a lot. Honestly, it just felt like he was depressed and then there was a flash forward and all of a sudden he was better and I would have liked to see like that progress. But says la vie, you know, you don't always get what you want, but it was an average book for me. I wasn't a huge, huge fan of it, and I'm not sure if that's because I listened to it on audiobook or if I just wouldn't have enjoyed it either way. I know that a lot of people love this book, so unpopular opinion question mark the next book that I have I am so happy I finally finished it I started it at the end of August and it is currently September 28th when I'm filming this and I just finished it it took me 
so long, but it is Wilder Girls by Rory Power, and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It follows the Raxter girls who were put on quarantine 18 months ago after Tox infected them. The Tox is a sickness that takes over your body and basically genetically modifies it in very grotesque, gruesome ways. Unable to leave the school grounds for the fear of what lurks in the woods beyond, they are forced to wait for the cure that they were promised. But then one of the girls named Byatt goes missing and her best friend Hetty will stop at nothing to get her back, even if it means breaking quarantine. I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I'm gonna be honest and say that I did think about putting this book down several times, but everybody said that it picks up, it gets better, just keep pushing through. So I pushed through and I can definitely say halfway through it does pick up. Honestly, I think it's because there's so much backstory about the girls and talks that need to be covered, so it does make sense why it took so long to pick up. I had no idea that this was actually a retelling of The Lord of the Flies. I am so here for it. The Lord of the Flies is one of my favorite classics and now that I know that it is like a loosely based retelling, I can definitely see the parallels between the two. I really liked the alternating perspectives between Byatt and Hetty. I was intrigued by both of them. I think that each of them brought a very unique aspect to the story. I will say that I am a bit disappointed by the ending. I'm not a huge fan of open-ended endings to a book. I like to feel satisfied by the end and know exactly what happened. It does kind of feel like it's setting up for a sequel, so I don't know if that's actually a thing or not, but that's what it felt like to me. But overall, I ended up giving it a 3.5 just because it took me so long to get into it. I don't feel like I could give it a 4. It's like a 3.75. That's what we'll go with. The next graphic novel that I read is my new favorite graphic novel ever. I am obsessed with it. It's called Snapdragon. It is by Kat Lay. It actually doesn't release until February 2020, but when it does, I highly recommend you guys check it out. It follows a young girl named Snapdragon. She's always felt a bit like an outcast. Nobody seems to really want to hang out with her. They call her the weird girl. And then she befriends the town witch who is actually just a little old lady who sells roadkill on the internet. But then she discovers that, that Jax is actually able to do magic and she actually is a witch and she asks her to help her learn magic and Jax agrees and it's the story of her teaching her magic. But then there's also a little mystery twist to it where Snapdragon actually has a link to Jax in some way from the past. But I absolutely adored this graphic novel. I give it a 5 out of 5 stars. It's just one of those novels that makes your heart warm when you read it. It discusses very serious topics in a very easy, simple way. Like, for example, Lou, who is Snapdragon's best friend, is a transgender female. At the beginning of the book, they're closeted and they don't feel like they can be who they really are. And then throughout the book, there's just such a subtle change where Lou gets to be who they want to be. And it's done in such a respectful and just subtle way that it's not a huge focus of the book. And I just really loved that. I absolutely loved every single character in this book. Snap is such a little feisty chicky. I just love her so much. Like at one point she literally headbutts the bullies that are bugging Lou and I'm just like here for it. And Lou was such a sweetheart. They were just so supportive in everything Snapdragon did no matter how bizarre it seemed. They were just like yeah you do you girl like whatever makes you happy and I loved that. I also was a huge fan of Vi who is Snapdragon's mom. She is just so hardworking and just so loving to those she cares about and you could tell that she really cared about her family. And then Jax, the little old witch, was by far one of my favorite parts of this story. She is just so humble and sweet and she was just such a great mentor to Snapdragon, not only with the magic but life in general. She never shut Snap down when she made a mistake. She was very supportive and she just obviously wanted what was best for Snap and I really loved reading about that. Not to mention there's a three-legged dog named Good Boy and if that doesn't make you want to read this graphic novel, I don't really know what will. I also really loved the mystery aspect of it and trying to figure out how Jax was connected to Snapdragon and how she is just made my little heart so happy. So definitely, definitely, definitely read this if you get the chance because it is just so cute and I just, 
I'm gonna be squealing about this graphic novel for the longest time. Also, the artwork is just so great in it. Like, the facial expressions that, that these characters have are just awesome. I loved the colors. Because there are panels where the colors are super, super bright and like eye-catching, but then when it gets to the more like creepy aspects, I guess you could say, of the book, then the colors get very dark and eerie, kind of. Like, the whole mood shifts with the colors, if that makes any sense. But like I said, five out of five stars. Please, please, please pick this graphic novel up when you get the chance in February. It's so worth it. The final graphic novel that I'm going to talk about in my wrap-up is Grimoire Noir. This is by Vera Green Tea and Yana Bogath. I'm giving it a four out of five stars, but it follows a boy named Bucky Orson who wants nothing more than to find his little sister Heidi who has disappeared from her room one day. At first, their parents think that Heidi is just playing a trick because she's actually a witch who has the ability to be invisible, but as the hours go by and Heidi still doesn't reappear, they start to worry that she might have been kidnapped. And so Bucky decides that he is going to find his little sister and he starts an investigation of his own where he looks into the town and the townspeople and he actually discovers a little bit more than he can bargain for. I ended up giving this book a 4 out of 5 stars. Honestly, I would recommend it for the artwork alone. It is honestly breathtaking. It is so beautiful. I feel like me just flipping through and showing you a couple of the panels isn't really going to do it justice, but it is honestly just gorgeous. The facial expressions that this artist was able to achieve is just like amazing. Like you could really feel the character's emotions and just everything that was going through their heads at the time. I just definitely recommend it for the artwork alone. But moving past that, the plot and the story had me instantly hooked. I was super intrigued by the characters. I think that the whole concept of only the females in the town being able to do the magic was a really cool turn because they actually have like a force field over the town that made the females who had magic abilities not be able to leave the town ever. And if they tried to leave the town, then they would die. And so it kind of made magic into a curse rather than a gift and I was just really intrigued by that whole concept but honestly I was just really invested in the story. I wanted to know what happened to Heidi, where she was, is she okay and then little things about the town just kept getting brought up and just discovered and I was just sitting there like oh my gosh this is so good. The reason I'm giving it four out of five stars though instead of five out of five stars is solely because the ending just felt a little rushed to me. I kind of was a little bit unsatisfied with it, which is why I dropped it down a star. It's the perfect Halloween read. It is just so creepy and spooky and just please read it. It's really good. Alright guys, so that was my uh, September wrap up part 2. Check out part 1 if you're interested. Let me know down below if you've read any of these, what you thought of them, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye! <laughs>